Hey, what's up friends? Today I've got a quick video for you on designing the surround sound for your home theater. One thing I want to talk about just right up front is something called Dolby Atmos. When clients come and meet us here at our shop, or when they visit with us at Pareto Homes, they're seeing the theaters and talking with us, one of the most common questions we get asked about is Dolby Atmos. And it's been out a few years now, but people are still unfamiliar with why it works. And a lot of times people make the assumption that Dolby Atmos is simply just putting more speakers into the theater. But the biggest thing that's changed with Dolby Atmos is in the past, if we wanted to have a dinosaur run across the screen or if we wanted to have the transformers fly overhead and explode, the way they would simulate that in sound is as the dinosaur ran across the screen or the airplane threw across, flew across, they would take the volume down on one side and increase the volume on the other side. It would sort of trick our ears into believing that the sound had actually moved and really all they were doing is manipulating the volume. With Dolby Atmos, they actually have an object of sound and that object of sound literally moves through the room. And so the more speakers we have in the room, the more that object of sound can actually move, the more immersive the experience, the more it sounds like we're really there in the middle of the movie. And when you see and get to hear a really good Dolby Atmos setup, it's phenomenal. The experience is the best thing out there. So we're total geeks. When we go to big markets where they have cinemas that actually have Dolby Atmos in the cinema, we always go and watch the movie that's playing just because we want to experience a movie in Dolby Atmos. So we're gonna start with the basics, do a quick review on like 5.1, 7.1 and build on that real fast and then give you a tip at the very end about uh, if you have an existing room already and you're not looking to, to retro or run wire, some things you can do to get Atmos into that setup as well. Okay, so real typical, this is a 5.1 setup and the only reason I'm showing you this is I just want you to see how the rear or surround speakers shift ever so slightly as we move from a 5.1 to a 7.1. And I should add, like everything, we learn what we can about best practices, but in the real world, we can almost never use best practices. There's construction material in the way, maybe you've got HVAC or a window or a door where a speaker would be in the best placement. So we modify and we do the best we can. But this is right off Adobe of Atmos's website um, or Adobe Labs. This is very, very common setup. Okay, you've got your seated position here, your king's chair that we talked about in our last video, and your rear speakers are gonna be 90 to 110 degrees angle, and your front right and left are gonna be 22 and 30 degree angle to the seated position, right? Those are kind of ideals. And again, pay attention to these rears as we move to a 7.1 setup, it changes just slightly, okay? The speakers are more straight off the ear and our surrounds or our rears, they're about 135, 150 degrees, okay? And instead of being kind of over here in this area, they've moved slightly over here to give some space between the surround speakers. Now, uh, if you're curious, assuming these are in-wall, in-ceiling, there's a lot of different talk about this, especially since Atmos hit the market, but as a general rule, we want these speakers to be about a foot and a half above ear level when, this, when you're seated. So sit down or imagine where you're gonna be sitting and about a foot and a half above that is where you want the speakers to be. Some people say that with Atmos, you actually can go much higher now and it creates a little bit more space and a little bit more feel, but more and more I see people still using that foot and a half rule at, at, at ear level, okay? So this is sort of a 7.1 setup. Now, when we get into Atmos, you don't have to have a 7.1 to do an Atmos. You could do it with a 5.1, and actually we've done a lot of these. It'll look to the average person walking into your room like you have a 7.1 surround sound, but two of the speakers are, are the overhead Atmos speakers. And so um, here again, we have the same setup as the 5.1 that we had earlier, but we've added two Atmos speakers in just in front of the seated position. Now, we normally like to do about a 45 degree angle. Um, for whatever reason, when you look at Dolby Labs, you'll notice that when there's only two Atmos speakers, it's cheated back a little closer to the seated position. When we go to four speakers, and you'll see this on the next page, we actually bump these forward a little bit. The other big thing to keep in mind is that the Atmos speakers are almost always in line with your front and left, your front left and front right channel speakers. So this is something we went through HAA certification, they really hit on. So if you can imagine that we drew a line up to the ceiling and then out, the Atmos would be on that line, okay? So that's sort of a 5.1.2 setup. So five surrounds, a subwoofer is the 0.1, and then the 0.2 are the two Atmos speakers, okay? You could do a 5.1.4, so if the room was big enough, you could move these surrounds back a little bit and you could drop in two Atmos. 
and you would have a 5.1.4. That's perfectly acceptable. Okay, and then we have what we call a 7.1.4. Okay, and again, the thing that I want you to see is that our Atmos speakers right here are all on line with the front right left channel speakers, okay? And that's a really big deal as far as getting the Atmos properly placed. These are also on about a 45 degree angle from the seated position, okay? And the cool thing, if you go to a cinema, they can have tons of Atmos speakers. They're not limited to four. Uh, right now, I believe there's at least a handful of receivers on the market that support a total of six Atmos speakers overhead. So if it's a really big room, particularly a really long room, maybe you have three rows of seats, you could actually add in another set of Atmos speakers, okay? But what it's doing is the more speakers we have, the more that object of sound is able to move through the room and help us feel like we're really there, that the dinosaur is really trying to eat us or the airplane's really flying overhead. One of my favorite demos when this first hit was one of the new Star Trek movies. And there's a scene where they're on some alien planet and they're trying to run off and jump off the cliff into the water and there's spears going by. And as they're throwing the spears, you can literally feel and hear the spear go right by your ear. It feels like there's a real spear coming at you. It's a really fun way to experience a movie. And that's what Atmos does for us, okay? so. Kind of want you to see this, and again, um, I'll show you in a minute. These are best practices, but in reality, we almost never see theaters that look like this. It all goes out the window, and I'll show you in a minute. So, before I get to that, one last thing. I know a lot of people tell me, like, well, I'm already in an existing space, I'd love to do Atmos, there's no way I can do it, or maybe you have a media room that's not dedicated, it's more of a flat screen TV, and maybe you're thinking a sound bar. Cool thing is there's a lot of really cool technology out there from a number of different speaker companies that allow you to enjoy Atmos even if you don't have all the wiring and everything in place. So a lot of different speakers that have multiple speakers that fire in different directions. So this is a very common thing right now. This is a sound bar and it'll have speakers out the front that fire the regular 3.1 or even 5.1 surround signals. You might have a sub down here for that 0.1. This is gonna fire sound straight out for the main channels. It's gonna have an up firing speaker on top that actually fires up and reflects off the ceiling back down. And I know that sounds crazy, but it sounds incredible. In fact, the very first Dolby Atmos demo that we sat through that Dolby actually put on, they used all floor standing speakers. So they had these tower speakers, right? And then they had a second speaker on top that was reflecting the Atmos channels off the ceiling. So these were our surrounds, and these were our Atmos, surround, Atmos speakers reflecting off the ceiling, and it sounded incredible and very accurate. So if you're in a situation where you have like a crawl space, and you could fish some wire under the floor, or maybe you're gonna pull the molding off and sneak wires in there and staff it back on, this is an application you could use to put Dolby Atmos into the room as well. So these can be wireless, these can be hardwired. There's a lot of applications here to bring that Atmos experience into any room, and it's a lot of fun. If you've never heard a Dolby Atmos demo, I recommend you go find somebody, a friend, a buddy, go see one of the local dealers and figure out kind of what you're missing. Uh, you've got to have this in your setup. Now for just a minute, I kind of want to wrap this up, but I want to just show this to you, okay? We're purists in a sense. We love to do things the best that we can, but we also understand that most theaters and most applications are not perfect and are not ideal. And if you go out online and you research, people have a, really, a lot of really strong opinions. There's an acoustician that I follow that I really like and really respect, and he disagrees with everything I'm about to share with you, so take it for what it is, okay? He thinks you should never do what I'm about to tell you, but I have clients who want the experience and the room's not ideal, and my attitude is have it and have fun and enjoy it and make the best out of the situation you've got. And for our clients who've done that, they've all loved it. So give you a couple of examples. We have a client in Twin Falls. His theater looks kind of like this. So he's got a door here, uh, comes out, and juts out like that. He's got a pool table over here, like kids area here, and the theater points like this, okay? And then his seats, or like that. So that's kind of how his theater looks. He's got a big, huge barn door here. So there's no way to put speakers here. And I forget why, but there was con some construction problems over here. So there was no way to put speakers here. And the back wall where we would normally put his rear speakers is like 20 feet from the seated position. So we couldn't put his speakers there either. 
So what we did is we've got his three front speakers behind the screen. We've got his Atmos speakers like this. And then we've got his surrounds that are using in-ceiling angled speakers. So he's got a 7.1.4 surround sound and all the surrounds and all the Atmos speakers are in ceiling. Now, if we go and we talk to some of the purists, they'll tell you that this is bad, that it doesn't work, that you can't do it. Our client absolutely loves this experience. All of his surround sound speakers are angled in with angled speakers. All of his Atmos speakers are down firing like they would normally be. Is the experience perfect? No. Does he love it? Absolutely. So I'll give you one more example of this, okay? Kind of give you an idea. Those of you who went through the Salt Lake Parade last year, or those of you that have seen our parades or have seen the images of our projects, the one that just won the award this year, here's kind of what it looked like. So it was open and then there was a big bar here and the first row of seats and then there was another row of seats, okay? Theater was built before we got there, okay? It was all framed out, it was all designed, so we kind of had to work with what we had. So this is not an ideal setup, Seats all the way against the back wall. We can't create any separation in speakers between the speaker, the, the surround speakers. And this was actually the cash seat. So a lot of things going wrong with it. So what we did is we've got our three speakers here. We do have one set of surrounds here. And then we have two surrounds in ceiling that are angled in, two Atmos speakers, and then two Atmos speakers in front. Okay, so again, this is by no means perfect. A lot of people would chew this up and say this is horrible design, right? Because it's not perfect. But the room didn't lend itself to perfect design. So we did the very, very best we could on the space, in the space that we have. I had speaker manufacturer reps and speaker, like multiple speaker manufacturer reps, um, amplifier reps, lots of people who know the industry very well sit in this seat and just go, wow, they could not believe how incredible this room sounded when it was all said and done. So you don't have to get hung up on the ideal perfect setup. This will work really, really well for you. But if you understand kind of the basic principles, it'll help you design the perfect setup for your, for your theater. As always, we appreciate you watching. We'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, and share this with your friends.